be honest. It's all you can do is to be honest. And if you can't tell your story, then tell it to me and I'll carry it where it needs to go. We've had a lot of heartache and we've had a lot of difficult challenges in almost 50 years of marriage. But sitting on a stand and testifying against your daughter in order to terminate her rights was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It hurt both of us, Anna, because I had to be honest. He wanted to be adopted. And it was funny because the day we went to court and the day we signed the paperwork, we went out and we got in the car and he called me mom. And that was really great. We don't know what his trauma is. It was pre-verbal. There was probably some prenatal trauma. Favorite line, can't love trauma away. You cannot possibly love a child enough to make that trauma go away. But it wasn't until he started preschool that um, the real developmental issues and the anger and the fear and the attachment all came to a head. And that's when we had to seek out some heavier help to teach us. And so I started looking for answers. And when I wasn't finding any answers that satisfied me, I started pushing for services and I started searching deeper and I became an advocate because not only was I looking for answers for myself at that time, I was looking for answers for other families. And if I could have had a case manager, even if I wasn't a foster parent, some case management would have made huge difference for me because I didn't know how to do it. I had to learn. There are 2.9 million or more grandparents that live outside of the foster care system that don't receive any help. The tough part of that is that each state has their own way of handling kinship families. Some states are really good. Some states don't even recognize they exist. Some states would prefer you just went the other way. I administer three different online support groups for relatives that are raising grandchildren. And I belong to five or six more. And day in and day out, it's families asking, how do I do this? It's families that say, my daughter's in jail or my son's in prison and the mother is, you know, a druggie and the kids are here and how do I get them permanently or how do I get my family member to clean themselves up and take them back? I hope grand families can be supported in the same manner that other caring families are in. I would like to be able to see everybody get down to the business of raising and healing children rather than trying to figure out are they going to pay for their medication or their Medicare supplement? When is the Social Security check going to come and are we going to make it that far? Because this kid needs a pair of shoes. So families need to focus on the children. For a long time, I missed the us part. But now, I think we're stronger together than we ever could have been. I think we have more because of this focus. And I thought that becoming grandma was the top of the mark. And I love those kids desperately. But Holden is twice loved because he's loved as my grandson and he's loved as my son. So he gets double. And there is no sacrifice that I wouldn't make, nor would Ed. <laughs>